President Abraham Lincoln, the Republican Party, and some Democrats still loyal to the Union seem to be the only ones avoiding sectional conflict in 1860 and 1861. Seven southern states had seceded from the Union by February 1861. Even many blacks and northern abolitionists favored this Union because it could purge the nation of slavery. Frederick Douglass declared in a speech at Boston in December 1860, I am for a disillusion of the Union. If the North is to forswear the exercise of all rights incompatible with the safety and perpetuity of slavery, then will every right-minded man and woman in the land say, let the Union perish and perish forever. Free and enslaved blacks had been waiting for a watershed moment like the Civil War since the writing of the Constitution in 1787, a moment where the nation would reckon with its original sin. It is true that disunion was the product of the conflict between the North and the South in the decades leading up to the Civil War. However, black abolitionists, free and enslaved, began waging their own Civil War over 70 years before the fighting ever began. Benjamin Banninger was one such figure who did not hesitate to challenge the government to live up to its creed. He was raised as a free person of color in the state of Maryland, where his grandmother taught him to read and write. As a child, he developed an interest in mathematics and mechanics, and soon became accomplished in clockmaking, astronomy, and surveying. In 1791, Banneker assisted Major Andrew Ellicott in surveying the new federal city that would become Washington, D.C. He rose to prominence by publishing an almanac based on his own calculations. Banneker was long aware of Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson's views about blacks. Proud of his African heritage and confident in his abilities, on August 19, 1791, Banneker wrote Jefferson, including a copy of his almanac. He cordially reminded Jefferson that during the Revolution, he, Jefferson himself, called slavery an evil. How could Jefferson now support an institution he had once said he abhorred? Banneker wrote, This, sir, was the time when you clearly saw into the injustice of a state of slavery, and in which you had just apprehensions of the horror of its condition. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Sir, how pitiable is it to reflect that you should at the same time be found guilty of that most criminal act which you professedly detested in others with respect to yourselves. Jefferson wrote Banneker back, briefly thanked him for his letter, but failed to answer Banneker's questions regarding slavery. Jefferson, like most whites, quickly cast aside the contributions of African Americans in winning independence from England. Jefferson replied, Sir, I thank you sincerely for your letter. Nobody wishes more than I do to see such proofs you exhibit, talents equal to the other colors of men, and that the appearance of a one of them is owing merely to the degraded condition of their existence, both in Africa and America. I can add with truth that nobody wishes more ardently to see a good system commenced for raising the condition of both their body and mind to what it ought to be. I am with great esteem, sir, your most obedient, humble servant, Thomas Jefferson. Banneker published the exchange in future editions of the Almanac, thus lending black and white abolitionists with another reference for their anti-slavery arguments. His exchange with Thomas Jefferson in 1792 is merely one example of how blacks confronted the institution of slavery in early America. Like Banneker, Frederick Douglass also roundly criticized President Abraham Lincoln for his failure to emancipate slaves. Douglass writes, I come now to the policy of Abraham Lincoln in reference to slavery. He has steadily refused to proclaim, as he had the constitutional and moral right to proclaim, complete emancipation to all the slaves of rebels who should make their way into the lines of our army. As you will learn in the next episode, Blacks begin to breach Union lines as contraband of war, demanding freedom, and the question of emancipation is brought to the forefront. <laughs>